What's up, RM Fantasy SX Nation? We are almost the S experts. We're uh, we're missing someone. I am uh, not Chase, by the way. I'm Josh. We got Josh in house filling in. Uh, the injury bug is not only biting the 250 East class. Our boy Chase went down hard. What last week? Yeah, he tipped over in a corner on his dirt bike. He basically his kneecap went up into his thigh, and he had surgery yesterday. He thought he'd make it for the show, but Turns out he knee out. surgery kind of sucks. And he so, lost out in so many words. Yeah. So <laughs> just teasing. if you're already missing Chase, that's right below. We've got, you know, changed my mind about that. But it's, we're going to. It's you know, a fill-in rider. We're good. We're yeah. going to roll with it. So. Yeah, the show goes on. Let's you may it. have seen me. I sometimes run the show behind the scenes. But today we've got Kobe. Kobe, say what's up. Yo, what up? Go, so uh yeah kobe's gonna be running the show and we're just gonna we're gonna play this off so welcome to the new format of the s exports where we're doing this a day before the races to hopefully hopefully give you guys a little bit more time to get the information get your picks in get all the stats so that you can make the most informed picks possible yep a lot of people were having a hard time getting in catching it after race day live so we got all these stats we want to share with you and make sure everybody gets to them so so Jay, uh, he's asking if Chase got his picks in. Um, we might give Chase a call. Actually, he'll be one of our guest callers today, so we'll get be, his thoughts. He could be doped up. Those picks could be out of control. We'll see. Yeah, <laughs> we have no idea. We're not going to take responsibility for in. Chase's yeah his uh, mental shape he's, at the moment. He's got prescription, I'm sure. Mm. All right. Well, let's get into Indy three recap. Let's just get to it. Um, do we have the lap chart ready? I mean, that was crazy. Top five. Roxon three peats. I didn't think he would. Well, I thought he would, but I still didn't pick him. Should have. Oh yeah, I mean, look at that. Just straight line all the way across the top. He just well never wavered. Three in a row is just tough. It was nothing against him. I didn't. I think any rider would have a hard time doing it, but he did it. Yeah. So we got Roxon in there. Webb second. Marvin coming out of nowhere on to third on the podium. Stewart and AC slipped in there after the Barsha Freezy Tomac incident, and. Speak of the devil, there's, there the man is in the wild card spot in 14th. Yeah, How'd freezing himself. Stu, oh, well, I got to talk about um, Scooty Puff. He totally called that <laughs> with did. Freezy. He, <laughs> he said the, the only things that fr- you can rely on with Freezy <laughs> is that he'll get the wild card, he'll take someone out, uh, and also this week or this year that he's ejecting from the bike. And he made two of those true, that's for sure. I, I can't get on Freezy. I just can't. Everybody makes mistakes. It's I think he gets a bad rap. Same thing. I don't think it would have been near as big of a deal. Yeah, it might have been stupid. It might have been his fault. But perception becomes reality at this point. And anything he does, everyone's going to blow it up. So Yeah, I mean, it's tough to say, though, because it always seems to be him. And is that coincidence? Is that him just being, you know, is that bad luck? Or is it just, I'll just maybe it there's not the right choices in the race? I don't, I don't know. think it's intentional. No, I, think it's, I agree. Maybe these dudes are just... Way more talented, um, better equipment, going faster, and he's doing the he's doing the best he can. That's what I see out for there. sure. I see him doing the best he can, and he it's just one of those dudes that's always in the wrong place at the wrong time. Shall we have a look? Yeah, let's uh, do look. the recap. I'm not going to put all this blame on him though. I yeah, mean, so they're getting ready for that triple. Barsha, I mean, I heard Freezy say that he felt like Barsha was trying to thread the needle, and when you see this next replay, it's definitely looking like that. Like, there's no yeah. room right there. So Barsha kind of made a bonehead move, but I, I mean, mean I he was see... hoping something was going to happen. Then Tomac just ends up being... I just don't see in Freezy's mind saying, I'm going to come over here and cut Barsha off and maybe mess up him and Tomac real quick. I just don't see that happening. So I'm surprised we didn't get more clips, though, um, like a couple weeks ago of people screaming at the TV. Because, you know, <laughs> with that race, I mean. Yeah, it was looking predictable. Well, Webb is coming up on, yeah. on rocks, and that we got to talk about that. Show the last uh, last turn there, Kobe. You know that rocks and right here was like, there's no way. I'm not letting this happen. Webb, like, you know, yeah. you're not getting past me. You're not going to do this one more time. I... I believe that if if Webb were to make that pass on the last like lap of that race one more time, Roxon might have had a mental breakdown. If there would have been one more lap. Oh yeah. I mean, it would have been a, a nerve wracking lap for him, no doubt. Yeah. So if you guys had Webb to win, I'm sure you were screaming at the TV. And then if you had Tomac and Barsha in your top five, when that whole thing happened with Freezy, it, everyone was just probably just like, well, I mean, I was one of those people. I had my top five pretty much right, except for I had Roxon and Tomac flopped. And when that happened, I was just like, oh, it's over. <laughs> I'm just saying he hurt people in the top five. 
But if you went with, like Scooty said, picking him in the wild card, it was funny to me. So many people are mad that he messed up their top five, but they also got him right in the wild card. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah, so had, a, had that win, not happened, they probably here. wouldn't have got him. I had uh, Martin, who was right outside of the wild card. And then also in the very last, I don't know what happened. If you look at the uh, lap chart, uh, he was in 13th. He got up to 12th, and then something happened, and he dropped back down, just barely misses the wild card, and goes right below it. And so I was pretty bummed. I thought maybe I was going to make up some points. I had Bloss. I'm not sure what happened, but the man took last place, so I'm not too pumped on that. I hope he's okay. I hope nothing bad happened. But we do have video, more video highlights. Yeah, let's go through them. What about that? Did you get the Shimoda going well, we've beast got mode? Shimoda. Going beast mode by these men. Look at this. Oh yeah, he saw. He had the fire in his eyes right here. Gets in a little too hot, but then he's like, "Oh, I mean, he's going back. for it. I love it." Oh yeah. And then here he's like, "Oh crap, I gotta slow down." Yeah, he saw the light <laughs> at the end of the tunnel there, like the lead <laughs> right in front of his eyes. Makes a little bit of a mistake there. Love the effort there going on. Yeah, you know, like he's gonna learn from that for sure, and he'll come back. Yep. You know, with, he'll probably calm it down a little bit, take some take some time. But I'm sure he saw <laughs> he saw that lead coming for him and oh, yeah. went for it, which you love to see with the 250s for sure. How about these Yamaha guys battling Dude. it out? The oh my gosh, teammate Nichols and Craig. Yeah, they were going for it. There is they're not holding I back. It. I think it's great. And then we got to talk about Nichols' crash too after the, this battle in the heat race. Yeah, Nickel going down. I well, thought everybody's like he's gnarly. got it wrapped up. It's over. Yeah, he's I remember. Done. I was watching the races and I was like, oh, unless he crashes, he's got this in the bag. And then literally like two seconds later, that I just happens. heard screaming in my house. I turn around. There's Nichols on the ground. Yeah. And you know what? First thing came to my mind. That crash was way worse than AC in Vegas. We can agree on that. He got really lucky right there. You can see he barely just grazes the top of I that mean, tabletop. This is way worse. He's lucky is what I'm getting at. That was yeah. way worse than AC in Vegas. Oh, yeah. That cost him the championship. Yeah. He gets back up there. You're coming from last place to third. Yeah. I mean, that's. That that's was insane. a wild charge. So what do we, What else we got? Mookie taking out Brayton on accident was kind of wild. Definitely unintentional. Yeah. But either way, there you go. Yeah, just a little – that's so crazy. It's just a little bit of a bop, and it was yep. that was all it took for Brayton to get off balance and not be able to stop. Sent him to his first LCQ in over a year. Yeah, so. I liked how uh, patient Brayton was in the LCQ. Yeah. He was just, like, taking his time. He, like, probably he, knew he was going to get up there. There was kind of a little stress for me, but I don't know. It's pretty cool. I, not, I, not everybody was as patient in LCQs, though. No. Check oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Coming through the mechanics. I mean, that was pretty smooth. That could have gone really bad. Uh, I just, when you see someone flying over the berm like that with people standing around, but hey, he made the best out of it. He's back in there, so. Yeah. Um, um, let's see, what else do we got? Uh, Karma did hit Mookie. He had a pretty gnarly case, I think, oh, in that right. same race. Yeah, so this is from our friends over at GoPro. Um, it's pretty gnarly. Watch If you watch the whole race, but he crossroads are oh. there. Cases the triple. Oh. Goes down. He just gets up and, like, rolls through for the rest of the heat, but... Anyone that was not on a factory bike, that would have, like, obliterated you. Oh, dude. That, and he just handles it like a champ. That hurt to watch, but he's he's a strong dude. <laughs> Too Fast TJM says Freezy needs a timeout. What do you think I, I, about I that? Know. Maybe. I don't know. Mm. It does happen a lot, I'm going to say that. But, I like I said, I think he's just he's just riding over his head. I don't know. I think, zigged when he should have zagged. <laughs> all right, what about this for riding over your head? So what, let's talk about Barsha hitting Roxon. So comes out of nowhere, and he's like, he's not even close. And I think Roxon turns down a little bit too, a little tighter mm -hmm. than Barsha was expecting. But, man, like, I don't know. Barsha, we need to talk about this guy. Well, because, he apologized allegedly, and they're good. So Yeah. It yeah. was an accident. He that wasn't his first run-in, though. I mean, he, he hit AC pretty hard right here off the 450 main event start. Well, you don't oh, get yeah. a nickname Bam yeah, Bam for no reason. Yeah, he comes oh, across. And AC gets nailed. Yeah. If you watch AC's GoPro on the YouTube channel um, <laughs> on GoPros, it's you can see it. it he gets totally derailed. <laughs> um, yeah, crazy night though. There's definitely highlights, and then Roxon obviously coming through with the win. I think yeah. that for was a good mental boost for him. But we'll see if he can. Uh, I mean, I can't keep that going. He's riding better than I've ever even seen after how many catastrophic injuries. It's insane to me. But all right, well, let's talk about player picks. All right, let's look at the picks. Uh, average points, 42 points. 
way up on the season average of 36. So people do good. No perfect scores. Only 13 people had all five in the top five in some type of order, which is no surprise. Yeah, that's but, interesting, though. I mean, that's a pretty high percentage, like average, but with no perfect scores. Yeah. That's pretty crazy to see. Well, 31, they're almost 32% got two picks correct, which you got to think a lot of that is rocks and winning. Those are all the people that picked him to win. So only 88 people had the correct top five in their picks, just not in the right spots. Oh, yeah, sorry. The other one was five picks correct. Uh, 40% had rocks and win. 30% had Tomac. 27 had Webb which is as close as the picks for the top spot have been in a long time yeah. between three riders. So it's it's intense. Yeah, it's getting close. I mean, it's so hard to pick right now. I mean, do you, are you banking on Roxon to keep winning? Or do you think Tomac's going to have a charge? Do you think Webb's just going to, like, manhandle through the pack and do what he does? It's I mean, it's anyone's game at this point. That, I think the picks are showing that. That's all easy compared to the 1.6% that had Muscan in third. If you did that, I want to know why. That was that was a wild pick to me, but people did it. And that's not including rollovers, right? Not including rollovers, no. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, Brock Tickle was a wild top pick wild card rider, almost 20%. Three people did pick seven new suits to win, I noticed, going through the picks, which I like it. Yeah. Super fans, ride or die with it. I'm I'm cool with that. So So it looks like Kobe's got a poll started of who do you guys have to win? So let's just get it started. What are you guys thinking for this round? I mean, are you banking on Roxon to make it four in a row? We are going to Orlando where it may rain. It's an open stadium, and there's supposedly a 50% chance of rain. Uh, but I've also heard that uh, it's a pretty hard-packed dirt. So yeah. we'll just kind of see how it plays out. Well, which... they're doing the recreation of, what, 07 Orlando. Yeah, when Carmichael and Stewart were going at it, they're doing a, a oh, that recap race, of that. That race was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Ricky's last race. I mean, if you go back and watch Stewart though through those whoops, it was insane. I I'm just gonna say I miss I miss James out there so bad. Well, maybe uh, you know maybe his bro's gonna put it put it through the oh, whoops. I started just to like... think that I did. Just gonna send it. <laughs> exactly. But um, let's talk about these fun facts. All right, fun facts. Let's let's dig into it. Only two riders have finished where they qualified last round, which was Stewart and Davolo. So if you're going off the qualifying. Might have been a rough round. But look at this. Roxon has led n- more laps, 90 total, than all other riders combined at 66, even though he hasn't got a whole shot this season. But he's been right there. I mean, if he hasn't gotten the whole shot, he's like second well, or third. What I'm seeing from that is he is doing what he has to do to get the lead early. Yeah. Even if he doesn't get the whole shot, he is going to push – as hard as he can early, get out front, and we're seeing what happens when that happens. Yeah, so he's doing he's a gone. great job of putting himself in the right position, and I think, obviously, the picks are starting to show that. We've got picks in. The 42% so far on the poll have Roxon to win. I could see that. We've got uh, Tomax right there in second, and then Webb, which is pretty predictable. So we've got one, one vote for Barsha right now. Uh, man, I don't know what to do with him. Like, he's getting really great starts, but, you know, like two rounds ago, we were doing a poll that said, are you even putting top, him in your top five? And now it's round. kind of like everyone's back on that Barshall Law train. I, it was looking good until, you know, the Freezy thing. What was that? That old drop we have. I was stressing. I had Vince Freezy behind me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I don't want to jinx either, but at this – Roxon has been the points leader after, after the first six rounds in each of the last three seasons. Striving and thriving. <laughs> He's striving, he driving striving hardcore driving. right now. At this point last season, the top three riders were only separated by nine points, which he has a way bigger lead than that now. And in in 2019, Roxon had a one point lead over Webb right now and two point lead over Tomac. So his his lead is looking strong. If you're looking long term, right? Oh now. yeah, he's he's put himself in a great position. So so yeah, well, I mean that leads us to talk about is he going to be able to keep it going in Orlando. So we kind of talked about it is an open stadium. Uh, there may be r- rain. There may be a mudder. Does that change up your picks? I I mean, Roxon is pretty good in the mud, but there's always the people, those staples that you talk about, like Plessinger. Yeah. Um, the muddier it gets, the better he's going to do. Doesn't ever seem to really affect Tomac. Yeah, Tomac seems to do. I mean, you look at Salt Lake last year. They had that mudder, and Webb and Tomac went ham on that yeah. track, and they were doing stuff that no one else was doing. No doubt. So, they're, I mean, you've got to look at them because, I mean, Roxon was in that race. He was kind of dealing with his mm-hmm. immune system or whatever, but he definitely wasn't at that pace. So no. we're going to have to definitely keep an eye on qualifying and see what happens at the track. Um, yeah. Let's look at the trap map. 
track map. I'm liking it. Yeah, I kind of like the the diagonal start. I'm interested in how that's going to play out. There's not really that many whoops, so if it does get muddy, I mean, those might not play a huge factor in there. No, we got a sweet but, wall jump. A lot of 90-degree turns, which you could run it in on somebody. Yeah, they didn't um, bring any of that Florida sand in, though. I mean, how many of you guys want to see the sand in this? Uh, I'm still waiting for split lanes. I like those split lanes. Really separates them, makes them take different lines type of stuff. I'm waiting on that, but. Rowan Thomas says four peat for Rocky Rocky Roxon. <laughs> oh, that man, the it's, nickname? it's so hard not to <laughs> bet against him. I mean, uh, even Brock says ninety four is on fire. Yeah, you can't uh, that. It's Kenny's race to lose, says Shane. Yeah, I mean it really you're crazy to bet against him, but I mean you gotta think at some point he's gonna slip up and you know, are you are you gonna take that risk in your picks or you just go play it safe and then take the hit on your points? I go to the point that uh, any normal man wouldn't even be racing at this point after what he's been through, but he's not a normal man. Yeah. So he's yeah. looking better than he's ever looked. I mean, we got the, the rocks and stats. If we want to dig into those right now. Yeah, let's get into them. Let's, let's see what we have. I mean, if he comes back and wins this championship, it's got to be one of the most legendary championships of all time. I mean, he looked not good to finish the year last year. And look at him just dominating right now. So You got suntan, baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, his last three finishes, 1-1-1. One, one, one. He did the 3 P in Indy. So well, he, look at his heats. He's won the last six gate drops he's been in. Heats, mains, it doesn't matter. He's going to yeah. win. Um, look at his starts, 1-1-3, one, one, qualifying, 8-1-5. Does not matter where he qualifies. He's yeah. going to be in your top five. The question is, where on the podium would you put him? How many of you guys uh, maybe took Roxon out of your top spot last week after qualifying eighth i was that way and that's why i banked on tomac yep. but i mean he proved me wrong really quick i did it too um it's led 90 laps over the last four rounds which is insane to me has started in first or second or has started in first in the last two rounds despite not getting a whole shot like we talked about earlier hasn't has only started worse than fifth one time this season so qualified eighth still one average start over the last four rounds is 1.75 yeah. That, to me, says you're picking him to win or second place. I don't see him anywhere else. Or yep. I wouldn't advise putting him anywhere else. Yeah, I mean, you, you're crazy to bet against him. What about Cooper Webb? Because, I mean, Cooper Webb put on a pretty hard charge, like you said earlier. If there was even one more lap, I think he might have gotten Kenny. I think he, he was starting to get in his head. Well, who's, who's Kenny's biggest threat to win over him this round? Webb or Tomac? Who do you, who do you think? Oh man! Look at the if web it's, stats if it's hard, and think about it. If it's hard pack, I would say Tomac based on the track, but it's hard to bet against Webb too because yeah, his last three finishes are two, four, three. He's tied with Barsha for the fourth best average start, which is uh, seven point five, which isn't great, but he's actually proved that he can make it through the track and like make it through the pack and pass people and get up there like slowly but surely. Well, too fast, TJM. He's talking about heat races don't matter. Yes, I agree, but. When you're getting starts on anything you touch and you're winning heat races, you're getting solid gate picks for the main, that's that's all helping you get better starts in the main, in my opinion. So that's yeah. where I was going with that. Yeah, I mean, he oh, – man, it's so tough to say where he's going to end up. I mean, he had a rough start to the season. Now he's starting to kind of find his groove. But it still is very stacked where if he keeps getting bad starts like this, it's going to be really hard for him to catch. I mean, he got a pretty good start this last week and was there for most of the race. But I don't think he would have caught Kenny had he gotten a you know even worse start. Well, he's stronger later in the race, but it doesn't matter when you're starting seven point five. You're not going to catch Roxon and pass him at that point. Yeah, I mean these dudes in front of you are going to hold you up. So, where do you have Webb right now? Right now, I've got Webb. I'm kind of banking on some other guys this week. I think I think Orlando's going to change it up. I think some guys with the week. They've recapped a little bit. I've got him for fourth. I got him third. What is this, Kelsey? Hate to say it, but I'm predicting Roxon's going to have a rough race, just going too well for him. That's what I thought last round, and That's, I'm, I've been yeah. proven wrong. Kelsey, I was with you last round. That's why I, I had He's, Kenny in fourth and Tomac in first. There's and something didn't play special out. going on right now with that guy is what I'm saying. Something well, special going on. He's got that Honda figured out. I mean, We're witnessing I'm, I'm sure something special. Honda – I mean, just so you guys know, I'm, I'm in the market for a Honda, and there there's nothing out there. And I think 
Kenny is to blame for that because he is doing a great job for selling Hondas right now because they get the whole shot. He makes them look like they turn really great. Kenny and or Corona, one of the two. Yeah, one of the two, man. Maybe he's both. doing a great job, and he's just putting himself in the right spot. All right. Um, someone who did get a pretty decent start last week, well, surprisingly, yeah, you got Tomac. To, he's the hardest pick for me, honestly. Where, yeah. where do you put this guy? I mean, he kind of snuck up the inside last week, and he was in, like, fifth, which is pretty dang good, and that puts him in a good spot to make some moves. He had some stuff happen, but, yeah, his last five, three finishes are 7-3-2 with starts of 5-9-1, and one, and his qualifying's been 2-2-1. Two, two, so qualifying's good, but it's not translating quite to making your picks and the final result. He was trying to push on Roxon in the heat, I think, to send a message. But by the main, by the time the main came around, he was so far back there, it didn't matter. Yeah. Like, I, I'm starting to wonder it, how hard Eli is really going to push it this year. Aquatic Terra Firma says Stewart is getting it. I mean, it's hard to – yeah. Stewart's getting the top five, yeah. It was, I don't have him in my top five as at the moment, but it was hard not to put that man in the top five. I will say that. So yeah. Going give, back to Tomac, though, I mean – covered all on Tomac's. He's got the third best average start this season, which is kind of surprising. It feels like he's gotten a terrible start, um, and he's led 25 laps. And so, I mean, that has its merit for sure. Average start of sixth. It's, that's good for him. That's dang good for him. So we can't can't complain about that. Yeah, we'll see what happens with Orlando. I mean, it, we got to talk about qualifying, or I mean, we got to see what qualifying happens. I mean, his fastest lap last round was half a second slower than Roxon. So Roxon was on a really great pace. And we'll see if they can basically do that again in Orlando. Tomac, though, in Florida has always always done well. Tampa, Daytona, That's wherever. true. So just something to think about. Right now, I have him in second. Because I almost think, dude, you got to start getting urgent, feeling some urgency at some point. I mean, yeah. the points lead is, is growing every week. Oh, yeah. I've got Tomac for the win. Um, I'm Aquatic Terra Firma saying if it's a mutter, it's Tomac. I think that's a – a really great pick. I think he just hammers down when it gets nasty. For so, the win. Yeah. Right now I got Tomac for the win. We'll see, you know, obviously with qualifying and see how things play out. But What's Tomac is his own crimp tonight, says Brock. I, he, that is I mean, how fact. solid do you feel about him in first, though? I mean, I don't know. I'm just kind of banking on maybe Roxon finally makes a mistake. Uh, I don't know. We'll see with qualifying. It's so hard to say right now. I mean, it even we're – you know, we're seven rounds in, and it's still so hard as, like, the first the first week where it's like, I, I don't even know with the top five. You, you're kind of, they're starting to get a pattern where it's a little bit safe, where you got Roxon, Tomac, Webb. You're pretty much consistent with those guys. But even those last couple spots, it's like AC, Stewart, Muskin. Is Osborne going to finally have a good round and get up in the top yeah. five? I mean, that's actually a perfect segue to getting into the spoilers. Um, we've got... A- AC, where do you put him? He was in f- fourth for most of the race, then back to fifth, and then had a few. He got passed by Muskin and Stewart, and then when Barsha and Tomac went into each other, he, he got some up, help. Yeah, he got some help. Hello. Hey. Hey, you're on with Josh and Christian. We're talking about um, our spoilers right now. How's it going? Everything's good. We're here in Orlando, and – um, the track's covered up, not a lot of water on it yet, so I'm happy. Sweet. So how – is this yes. your first year playing fantasy? We finally got you to sign up or uh, – Well, I've, I'm just terrible at picking – actually sending my picks in. So I signed up a couple years ago. I just never was oh, okay. able to get my picks oh. in. But this year I've been really consistent with it. It's fun having you guys with the challenge and everyone at Race Day Live too. I'm going to say I watch you put your picks in every week on Race Day Live. You look more nervous than I do when I put my picks in. <laughs> what is going on with that? Especially when you've been doing good. I mean, if you were in the running well, here for some prizes, it looks like. I, I think that, like, this place is pretty easy for me this year, but the top three have been tough. I mean, it's just been pretty inconsistent. Sorry, my little one's right here. <laughs> um, and uh, he's been coming to the races with us. So, anyway, uh, I just think that uh, – yeah, I, I get nervous because I'm pretty indecisive and it's such a deep field and really it's just tough to pick who's going to win, especially the first three. I mean, Kenny's on a run now, so I think that helps with the situation, but obviously all things come to an end at one point. But Yeah, and so for everyone in the chat, I'm just, nervous. 
Um, <laughs> if you don't know Ashley, Ashley is uh, the announcer down on the floor in Race Day Live. She does an awesome job of giving us the feedback after people win their heat races and stuff. And like we said before, she's doing really well. Um, so, Ashley, I've got a question for you as far as, like, I mean, you've been doing well. I mean, I know you're nervous. I mean, I think all of us are nervous every single round. We make our picks because yeah. you want to do good, especially if you got groups with, you know, people that have money on the line or their pride, all the stuff. Um, I think the top three-ish are kind of starting to iron out. We've got Webb. We've got Kenny. We've got Tomac. They're all kind of making it up there. But where do you kind of – what are you thinking as far as you're down there on the floor and you're talking to people – where are do you put you, yeah, people you, like Stewart or AC? Like, is there anything that they've told you or anything? You're trying to use some of that info for fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that really I, it's a little bit different this year just because we do have the COVID protocol like in place and we can't just go up to writers and talk to them and see how they're feeling. So um, as far as Malcolm goes, I really look at the whoop section. I think everyone does. But his, his car speed seems really good this year and even with the track last week was not the biggest whoop section and you couldn't get that run in and you had to break really hard afterwards so for him I probably should have put him I don't think I put him in my top five last week but he's just been really really consistent so with Malcolm and AC um I I really it's just a guessing game of anyone this this year but they're they're pretty consistent and I like I like what Adam's doing because he is Staying consistent, and he's not pushing that edge. You know, we did see him obviously at round sure. two push that edge and, and go down. But for him to have these nights where he's pretty quiet is is impressive to me because that means that he's maturing and and he's learning from from those big mistakes that we saw from him as a rookie and even on the two fifty. Yeah, so, this place is better. Than um, on the left. floor, I do have an advantage because I can see the corners a little bit better. I feel like in and how they're setting him up. Um, so that's what I, I don't know what to do with Orlando though because I don't know this dirt and I I'm not sure who will be good here. All right. Well, I, I hope at least you're <laughs> rubbing it in with Dan and Daniel <laughs> because I'm. I sure think Daniel rubs it in more than anyone though. <laughs> he's he's a good trash talker, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> what about um Barsha? Because I mean, he's like. Uh, two weeks ago, we were, I mean, we've talked about this a couple of times now, but like two weeks ago, people, like half the people had him out. They're just, you know, we thought it was just the normal Barsha kind of, you know, he's going back to his 10th to 5th place, who knows. But then he comes back and he's been getting good starts again. He's running up front. What are you thinking with him? I mean, as things are playing out now with Orlando, like last week, him doing really well until he hit Freezy. Are you putting him in your top five? Do you think he's a safe bet, or is he kind of more of a gamble in your bet? Yeah, has he in been your in your top fives, or what does it take for you to not put him in your top five? <laughs> you mean for Orlando? I know the second question, but for Orlando specifically with Barsha, do you think I'm going to put him in the top five, yeah. or just yeah. in general? This um, I'm I'm going to have to wait and see how it goes in qualifying with Barsha and that's kind of how I feel a lot with him. I know he's not usually the best qualifier, so you can't base a ton off of that. But for me and Barsha, it's like throttle control and how well um, he's able to, I know I've been talking about corners a lot, but it seems like that's where people are making up a, quite a bit of time this year. So uh, Barsha, you know, we, we all know him. He loves, to get on the gas hard and that's something that he mentioned <laughs> he mentioned to me in one of the interviews after qualifying he, he just said that the team has been working really hard with him just try to be a little more patient on the throttle so that's a big difference i see on the gas gas team and uh, i actually feel bad i've left him out of my top five more than i should have this mm-hmm. year because he's he's doing really well and uh yeah I, I, i'm gonna have to wait for orlando specifically but I think in general for him, it is about how much traction he can get on the track and if he's comfortable. And I think we all kind of heard him say he was searching for, I think 5% more is what he was saying with the bike. So if he gets that extra 5%, I think that it would be consistent top five every single weekend. And and I hope he gets another win this year. I really do because, you know, everyone keeps saying, you know, he's won, he even said it, his own words, one hit wonder, and he wants to get more wins on the season. So I yeah. hope that for him and the team. I think it's really a neat story. So, 
Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a great point. Um, he's tough, man. I can't figure him out. Yeah, he, he he's such a wild card. I mean, we're not <laughs> picking him for the wild card, but he is a wild card. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, um, one more question. Uh, so we've got four people that have won so far. Do you think we're going to get a fifth winner? And if so, who do you think it's going to be? Oh, um, we've got Moosekin. Uh, somebody was asking if you have Osborne in your top five. Or you know, I do. Anything. Actually, <laughs> actually, I was going to say that Osborne, I see being a winner this season. Hopefully, even I put him up there in the top three several times. So uh, he's going really fast. It's just one thing after another. You know, he got stuck in the gate. He went down right before the first round and pressed riding and so he was dealing a little bit with injury there and there might be something about some vibes here in Florida that he might be feeling and maybe he'll tap into that uh I I might put him for a win this weekend maybe or next weekend I'll I'll see how it goes I I think he will be our next winner I'm I do okay I I have confidence in him do I sound really sure of myself right then yeah because that's what we're you're making me nervous already we have 24 hours before I have to put in my picks I banked on Osborne for like the first three rounds and he let me down and I finally was just like, I got to let him go. I really wanted to, I, I wanted to see him do well. I wanted him to kind of like re resurface that uh, speed he had in Salt Lake last year. And yes. it's just until he proves it, I, I just can't bank on him. Well, I, I actually said yeah. she, she felt bad. She hasn't picked. She has. Don't feel bad. It's fantasy, not mm. personal. <laughs> I see on Race to Live, you could tell she is torn up about picking these <laughs> picking these riders. But that's like I you, always say, You too. work really hard hey. building these relationships with riders, and, and yep. they actually pay attention. And, and they say, I can't believe you didn't put me in the top five. And I know. Like the top 18 we need to pick because all of the top 18 are riders that could potentially win a race. You know, it's, yep. I mean, especially when we get sex and back and – we're going to have Makarov back this weekend, and mm-hmm. I'm curious on all of that. Well, so like I say, too, there's there's more good riders than there are good spots. Yeah, That's just the way it is. And you're in a very unique c- c- like scenario where you do have a personal relationship with these riders. And so it is, almost is, like, now I can understand even more why you're so nervous because it's like, I mean, I think for fans, we all have that. There's the the difference between I want to do good on my picks and I want my favorite riders to do well, and I always have to try and differentiate that. And I'm sure for you that's even intensified even more because you actually know them on a personal level. And <laughs> if you didn't pick them to win, interviewing them, you got to duck out real quick. Yeah, thanks for interviewing. I gotta go <laughs> before they ask me about it. Sorry, I gotta keep my my ten foot COVID protocol. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> well, either way. Uh, if you guys haven't been watching Race Day Live, make sure to check that out. Ashley, Dan, Daniel, they do an awesome job. Um, check out Ashley's picks, at least. She's been killing it. Doing awesome. <laughs> a lot better than all of us. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate, appreciate it. It. It, it. It really makes it fun. I hope that everyone realizes like how much more invested you feel in these races. Once you start putting these picks in, you, you get that stress level. Like Osborne was in fourth place i'm like oh go go back to fifth come on just go yeah. back to fifth yeah, yeah. I, I know it's silly to think that way but that's what i love it is people that adds will a watch different it. level to it there's always people yeah. that watch supercross but once you actually get them to sign up for fantasy they don't miss a supercross yeah They're screaming at the tv they get into <laughs> all the riders that's what i that's what i love about fantasy that was the whole goal of it from the start so when i see people doing that i love it yeah, aqua, uh, yeah me too. aquatic terra firma says you can't go with your heart in this game that's the uh, hardest part. Uh, it is so the hard. hardest part, especially yeah. when Trey was out there. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, thank you so much, yeah. Ashley, for calling in. We yep. really appreciate all the work you're doing you down on the down on the floor, and keep it up with you guys over at Race Day Live. Um, we love being in partnership with you guys, and uh, you guys do a great job. And we're just trying to, you know, just build on what you guys have already started. Really, and just beat Dan Daniel, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't added to that list, but I appreciate it. And we're having a lot of fun. Best of luck to everyone in round number seven. I can't believe we're already at seven, but I know. it's yeah. been great racing so far. Yep. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll get to talk to you again soon and uh, good luck on your I picks so. this weekend. All right. Anytime. Bye guys. Yeah. Oh man. Ah, that's a tough predicament to be in. 
I, oh, I can yeah. only imagine. I mean, sometimes you meet the racers at like the pits and stuff, and you feel like you kind of know them. But she like <laughs> knows knows them, and so oh, when she's yeah. like not picking them, that's got to be so hard. <laughs> that's what I was saying. I've watched Race Day Live a few times, and you can tell she's just sweating as they're making her put her picks. In. So yeah, it's hard to lock them in. We all know that, especially when you got to look them in the eye after. Yeah, so. I'm sure she's maybe she's like on the podium putting her picks in for race day live, and she's trying to whisper into the mic because the other <laughs> riders are around. She doesn't want to admit who she's picking, but uh, man, that's tough. But that's some good insights. Uh, hopefully, we can talk to her again in the future shows and kind of get some more track insights and stuff like that because it definitely helps to have someone out there that's seeing. You know, she's talking about the corner speed. She's seeing those guys actually go around the corner, which is way different than what we're seeing on the TV. Well, and she's high up on Osborne, which makes me a little less worried about him because we were just talking about it. Is it just bad things happening, or is he just there right now yeah. for whatever reason? So, obviously, well, she thinks he can turn it around. Well, what do you guys think? What in the chat? What are you guys doing with AC, or uh, with Osborne? Do you think he's still a top five guy? Is he still someone that you can rely on, or is he more like a wild card, which we should probably get into next, which is eighth yeah. place this week? Let's let's see the Osborne stats. I mean, we mentioned he might be a good pick for wild card, which sounds crazy, and then you look at the stats. I mean, average finish this season eight point five, ninth best of all riders. Oh, that's crazy. Average start is eleven point eight three, fifteenth best. Never would have guessed that this far into the season. Hasn't finished in eighth this season, but has finished ninth one time, tenth three times. But he hasn't started better than tenth once this season. I don't know what's going on there. That that scares me. I mean, that, so. the Husqvarna is not that much different than the KTMs or the Gas Gas, and, I mean, those guys are kind of I mean, figuring it out. <sighs> he was ripping starts last year. Yeah. I'm just saying he's in my click bait or pick bait, I mean, section because he always qualifies good. And he's only made the top five once this year. So Yeah, G. Williams says you can't rely on Osborne. Uh, Bruce has too many bad starts for Osborne. I totally agree. That's... I'm with that. I mean, he's bit us all how many times? I mean, everybody was high on, up on him to be challenging for the championship at this point. So. so Dino is saying, yes, Osborne is going to finish in the top three this year. But, Dino, I've got a question for you. When is it this round? I mean, when do you make that – take that risk and throw him in there and maybe try and make up some points because everyone else isn't banking on him yeah. to do well. I like Scooty Puff Sr. pointing out a good thing here. Rocks and the Web took the outdoors off, and they're running one and two. Maybe there's something there. I mean, Roxon hasn't faded. Looked like he's slowing down at all. So, yeah, that time <sighs> off is paying off right now. Yeah. I mean, you'd think – I mean, so Brock says that Osborne can win any day. It seems that his confidence is rattled. You'd think that his confidence is higher because he did so well at the end of Salt Lake and he won the outdoor championship. I'm not saying anyone's arguing that. I'm just saying, are you picking him to win? Because if you are, I want to see proof. Email us in if you picked Osborne to win and you're saying that. Because yeah. we all think he can, but to pick him to win this round, I don't know. That seems sketchy to me. So Dino's saying he sees it turning around tomorrow night. So, uh, Dino, you might have to get in our Discord and screenshot those picks because yeah. uh, we want to see uh, if, if it turns out and it pays off for you. That, Show uh, proof or it didn't happen. Yeah, I am actually banking on Osborne getting fifth. I got him in fifth right now. We'll All see right. how qualifying goes and everything. But I had to make that rule, take him out until I see something. <sighs> so he's out for me. I need to make he's up out. points. I'm not doing great. <laughs> I'm so – we, we kind of talked about it before the show. Uh, a couple of years ago, we did uh, the stereotypes videos for fantasy. If you guys haven't seen those, check out our uh, YouTube channel with them. They're a few years old, but they're still pretty relevant, I would say. And I'm definitely the one-hit wonder guy. I did really well last year. I got third place in our whole Rocky Mountain group, and it is not playing out that way this it's year. It's hard so. to string two, two years together. Like It's just it's hard to do. Yeah, It's just fantasy life, but... A lot of people bringing up Malcolm Stewart. What do we got on this guy? Where yeah, let's are you talk picking? about it. Malcolm Stewart, last three finishes, 4, 10, and 11, with starts of 6, 7, and 22 when he had that issue off the start. Finished exactly where he qualified last round. Has done that two times this season. So make that's, sure you see where he's qualifying. Yeah, that's a good point. Weird heat results this year. Has alternated taking third and fourth over heat one and heat two. When I saw that in the stat sheet, kind of blew my mind. I don't think you could do that if you tried which is kind of weird, but hmm. when riders go down, he's going to capitalize. We all know that because he's been in sixth or seventh, like almost all the season, it seems like. And when something happens late in the race, whatever, he's there. So, yeah. I, I, like I said, it was hard for me to not put him in my top five right now. But if 
someone doesn't look good in qualifying, something happens, the man is most likely going to take that spot. Yeah, I mean, and so we've got another stat in here. It's a smaller whoop section this week, and so that might hurt him. I mean, yeah, he is so screaming fast through those, like, long whoop sections, but he also is getting a little out of control this year. I mean, he wrecked the uh, last round, um, well, or, like, I think two when rounds Webb ago. went by him, it kind of broke his focus or something. Yeah. I mean, it was a dumb mistake for him. I mean, he had, well, he had the, the time where he went through the whoops a little bit hot, and then he took Mooskin down. I mean, he he yeah. made that play. It made it work, but it was and it was good for, for watching. But ah, man, I just it, it's it's hard to bank on him only because that's his like with the whoops, right? Like you're looking at the whoops. Well, and, that's okay, a strong do I, point. Yeah, yeah, it's totally a strong point. I I want to see maybe him seeing some other areas where he's starting to take guys down, or you know, or like you want to see him passing someone. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know, Mookie. Yeah, it's that's a hard say. I mean, he's kind of a spoiler. It's he could be right there on the, the cusp or he's, you know, like last week gets his season best or actually career best fourth. So, so when it comes down to it, is he in your top five right now? No. What would it take for him to get in your top five? Then no chance or some type of qualifying result track condition. What is it? I think after this, after this round, if he makes it in the top five again, I'm going to be banking on him. I okay. think, I, I think I just need he's one on more the, on the fence for you. Yeah. He's right there. Right. Stewart fifth, red racer. Uh, I saw some people picking him the wild card. I don't know about that. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, let's get back into that wild card. Eighth place. That's what's so crazy about this year is, like, even still, you can, like, I mean, you never know if it's going to be Tomac or Stewart that gets in eighth place. Especially when we throw wet, muddy conditions out there, anything can happen. So. All right. So we got a poll. It's who has a better night. We've got Stewart, Plessinger, Osborne, or Mooskin. I mean, Mooskin's another one we haven't really talked about. If things get a little technical and maybe there's no mud, I can see him maybe squeaking his way up into the top five again. It's kind of hard to bank on him because he hasn't had the best and most consistent like season the last couple of rounds. But he's like you said, he's not passing a lot of people straight up. He's capitalizing on mistakes, getting good starts and being in good spots. But I don't mm. really see him catching top dudes and passing them. So Bruce Bain says that if Chase is healthy, Chase can get a top get the get fifth. Around what? A lap? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm just teasing. Fifth in the points this week? I, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, we need to check on that, man. We're getting lots of votes for Mooskin. He's winning the polls right now. So get your votes in. If you uh, don't know how to vote, you just put exclamation point vote, space, and then the number of the rider. So 27 for Stewart, 7 for Plessinger, and so on and so forth. So and, oh, man. Do we get into his numbers, Mooskin? I mean, he's got the seventh best average finish of 7.67. Last three finishes, 3, 11, 10. Starts of 8, 16, and 13. That's all I need to know. I mean, he was not good in Indy. Even though he had that third, like we said, he capitalized on other people going down. Uh, has only made the top five when qualifying seventh or better. So watch where he's qualifying. The average start this season, 10.3. His best start was third in round one. So it's it's been bad start after bad start. Um, and Orlando does look more technical, like you said, though. So, I don't know. Is he in your top five? He's not in mine. Uh, not right now. Nope. We'll see with qualifying. Uh, He's Garrick, in the top five qualifying, maybe. <laughs> I'm with you, Garrick. He says, man, it's hard to give Osmar a top five. He's cost me dearly this season so far. I'm right there with you. Well, there's the people that have been picking him are done with him. People who might not have been picking him, they're starting to yeah, come around starting on to him consider, right now. Yeah, he's bit exactly. you so many times, it's hard to keep picking him for sure. Well, let's talk about the other Husqvarna rider, Jason Anderson. He's definitely kind of, I mean, it's its kind of crazy to say, but he's right there in that eighth place range. I mean, he showed a little bit of speed last week. Well, he, he we back? thought he might not even come back. Had a dislocated finger the round before. He comes back, takes sixth. Yeah. So yeah. is El Hombre back in business? I mean, where are you guys putting Anderson? Do you think if you know if it's a mutter, if it's not a mutter, do you think he's kind of gotten some fire underneath him and he's going to take a charge? Or I'm in no condition to tell that man what to do. All I'm going <laughs> to say is what I see and what I think. And that championship season kind of messed with him, I think. And he got into this whole vibe of like, I don't care. I'm just going to do what I do. But I hate it, dude. Even like right now, dude, I'm struggling a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Clint says I hate Jason it. who? I hate him with this I don't care attitude. Like I like seeing this dude up there winning 
I mean, it's exciting to watch race. Yeah. We need that well, jersey flapping out there. And uh, I want him to care more. I'm just saying that. I, I'm not saying he's not, but the whole vibe of Team Fried is cool. I love it all. It's good, but. I want I want to see him back up there, whatever it takes. So yeah, I like That's when it's the opinion. I don't care attitude, but he's putting in the results because yeah. I think that that has value, and that I think that just shows you don't have to be so so serious about this, and you can actually yeah. have fun. It does suck when he's got that mentality, but he's also not putting in the results. Um, Keep that mentality, but knock out some podiums while you're doing it. Yeah, I'm sure he's giving it a shot. I mean, he's just yeah, he's not putting himself in good spots. Averaging tenth place start this season uh, hasn't started better than sixth. That's, I mean, that's rough. That you can't do that this year. No. And his average finish this season is eight point eight. So, I mean, that really does put him in that wild card range. So, man, I mean, he's finished sixth once, seventh once, and eighth twice. So, he's really, I mean, he's a good one to bank on for that wild card spot. He's who I have right now. I mean, doesn't get good starts. McElrath's coming back. I love Anderson. Yeah. I love that man. But I have him in my wild card right now. That's just the way it is. Anderson is wild, all right, says Dan. When is racing, Oakley asks. When, racing is tomorrow. I think it's at, uh, it's a little earlier, isn't it? Like 7.30 Eastern, I think. Yeah, so there. it's about 5.30 for Mountain Standard Time for us. Yep. Um, but, yeah, just check check Peacock or your local uh, NBC Sports. So. Well, who else do we got for wild card? Let's, let's hit Dylan uh, Ferrandez. Plessinger, too. Yep. Ferrandez, let's bust it. this out. All right, Ferrandez. Last three finishes, 8.96. With starts of 13, 12, 4. So you never know what that man's going to do. Hasn't made the top five since round two. Without a good start, it's unlikely. I mean, let's just say it how it is. Has finished within three spots of where he's qualified over the last four rounds. He's one of the more more consistent riders to his qualifying. So if he's qualifying back there, seventh, eighth, I would advise against picking him. Uh, but if he is in that top five qualifying, that's when you're going to want to consider him. So. Had just about the same average lap time as Plessinger and Savachi last round. I mean, they were almost identical on average lap times. And like I said, he's going to have to be qualifying up in the top five for me to even consider. And even then, I still think he's a scary pick just because of his starts lately. What do you think? Uh, man, I mean, Dino's got it right. He says Fran is looking great on 250s, but isn't adjusting to the 450s. I mean, I think he's a great wild card pick. I don't think he's really a spoiler at this point. I think... I don't know. Maybe getting that second place kind of spooked him. <laughs> I don't know, but he definitely hasn't, you know, hasn't performed Something, since then. Yeah. I want to know where people have Plessinger because, yeah, it might be a mutter, right? And Plessinger is really good in those. I mean, the worse he, it gets, the better he's going to do. Yeah, yeah. He's. I mean, it's kind of been a mixed bag. I feel like sometimes he'll like all of a sudden shine in those crappy conditions, and then sometimes it's kind of still the same Plessinger we've kind of seen, but. Let's see where people got him. I mean, his average finish this season is 9.3 and his start of 11.5. His last three finishes are 11th, 5th, or 11th, 5th, 9th, with starts of 14th, 5th, and 20th. And so, ah, man, and then his average finish over the last three rounds is 8.3, and he's finished 7th, 8th, and 9th already this season. So you'd think he's going to be a wild card. You know, maybe he is going to have another fifth place and kind of, I mean, he did great that race when he, he started up mm-hmm. in fifth and then he held it. And that, that's what I like. Yeah. Even with a good start, he stayed up there where other riders get good starts, you know, they're going to fade. So that's where I, I almost think Plessinger to me would be more in the top five than the wild card. That's just me saying it. Yeah. Vlado says uh, eight. He's got wild card with Plessinger and eighth. Oh, man, AP's dad is the GNC chief champ. Yeah. Yep. AP Shane. gets him a GNCC. Yeah, so. AP, he's he's done great in GNCC, and I think that's where he's got, you know, that's where people talk about how well he's done mm-hmm. in those rough conditions because that's kind of what he grew up in. He's one of those good dudes that everybody wants to see do well. Yeah. So I think I bump him. I give him a little bump for that too because, I don't know, he's one of my favorite dudes out there. Well, let's talk about Savachi too. Let's kind of finish up the wild cards. Uh, Savachi's last three finishes are eight. Or 988 eight, eight, with starts of 7, 13, Good and Lord. 6. I actually watched the replay of the. Uh, actually, play it back, uh, Kobe, the 450 start. If you watch, he actually sneaks up the inside and he was like top five. And so, I mean, if he can do another start like this and kind of sneak up there and get a good start. Yeah, right here, you kind of see him sneak up on the inside of uh, Webb. And then right there, he's in fourth. Yeah. And so, if he can do that again, I think. You know, maybe I don't. We're not sure where his fitness is at, really. But 
Eighth place is a pretty good spot for him. I'm um, just going to say, he's been up in that top five quite a bit, more than I thought he would be at this point. Yeah, I think he's starting to see the light of like that top five podium. I, mean, I think he's starting to grab for it. Whether he can stay up there, I don't know. But it was cool to see him a couple of weeks ago hold off Webb for 14 laps. He started sixth or seventh in two of the Indy races. So, And with those finishes, eight, eight, nine. All right, I'm right, I'm taking Anderson out of that wild card spot, and it's Savachi. I'm changing it out. You're going for it. I'm going with Savachi. Yeah, I mean those finishes. You uh, that's hard to hard to bet against with an. I'm 80, going with the stats. Eight eight. The stats don't lie. <laughs> and we're throwing Savachi in the wild card spot. All right. Where 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 is he at for you? Is he your wild card? No, right now I'm picking Anderson for my wild card. Okay. I think I'm leaving you on that island. I think that's where he's at. Um, do we have a poll for wild card? Let's see what everyone else has, and then we'll kind of wrap this thing up. Yep. Let's get that going. McElrath coming back. We didn't yeah. have a lot to go off. I mean, there's just not a lot to go off. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, he's, he's going to be fresh, but his fitness could be off. It's hard to replicate those race conditions. So, yeah, if I you think pick I mean, him, I'm going to say it's risky. His fitness will probably be there, but is he up to up to snuff with the race pace? I I would argue against that. I mean, he was great on 250s. I, I since he hasn't had any exposure really in the 450s, I think it's going to take him a season to probably be considered for anywhere near top five and even the top ten. Well, I mean, he uh, he's on the Sexton Ferrandis level, no doubt. And where Ferrandis has been, I'd put him a little bit behind that just because he's coming back. So that's yeah. my thoughts on McElrath. Red Racer says he's torn between Savachi and Osborne. Well, let's see what you guys have. Let's uh, we got the poll up, so who's your wild card? Again, it's uh, exclamation point vote, space, and then the number of the rider. Uh, Plessinger took a commanding lead right there off the bat. So let's uh, let that play out for a second and see what you guys think. Let's kind of put your tough. money where your mouth is. This one is tough. Yeah. Eighth. I mean, anywhere in the top, I feel like from like ninth up to sixth in a wild card. Yeah. It literally could be anyone. Yep. I'm, I'm going off average finishes over the last few rounds. Like we was going over Savachi. Him. He, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm I'm rolling with Savachi. All right. Well, while people are doing the polls, let's uh, just lock them in. You okay. want to start? Yep. Let's do it. I've changed it three times before we started the show, <laughs> but I'm going with Roxon. If if you're getting that good of starts, leading that many laps, yeah, like Ashley said, all good things come to an end. But there is no reason to not pick him to win at this point. There's That's just very not. true. And I've been fighting it the last few rounds. I'm not doing it anymore. Um, a man that gives a shout out to Bob Marley on the podium. I'm giving him my top spot. Ken Roxon in first. Eli Tomac second. I he's got to feel some type of urgency at this point. Webb in third. Barsha fourth for me. AC just based off his starts and wild card Joey Savacci. What do you got? All right. So I am I'm flopped with you as far as the top two. So I'm. <sighs> I, I want Kenny to win. Just like, I mean, I want him to win the championship. That's where, like, yeah. my favorite riders and stuff like that. I do want Tomac to start catching him in the points and web just to kind of make the, the racing that much more interesting. Um, but I am going to pick Tomac to win for right now um, with the conditions maybe p- possibly being muddy. But even if they're not muddy, it's supposedly a very hard pack track. And Tomac's really good in those two. So I'm banking on him. Uh, Ken Roxon in second, Barsha in third. I've got Webb back and forth. I'm banking on Osborne right now in fifth place. Hopefully, he kind of reharnesses some of that Salt Lake City that's, speed. That's risky. It is. <laughs> I, I, but like I said, I got to make up some points at this point. I'm doing terrible. Um, and maybe that's why. I usually try and do a few consistent picks so and then like the one or two risks. Strategy at this point. I totally am. Right. And then that's wild fine. card with uh, Anderson. I like Shane Dog 1985. Good year. Until Roxon loses, I'm picking him to win. Uh, that's especially if you strategy. just got him right the last three rounds, it's going to be almost impossible to not pick him to win again. Yeah. Well, let's get uh, the real S expert in here and get his lock in picks. <laughs> We're going to call chase. Um, he's currently laying on the couch trying to heal up. Let's get some tussing in him. Let's see what he has to say. Oh, maybe not. Let's try it again. He's struggling on that phone. Could be taking a nap. <laughs> well, let's see what while while we're talking to Chase, let's see what you guys how, have a picture. How that poll end up? I'm interested. Chase, how what? you feeling, uh, man? 
I'm all busted up, Cap. You're already live, so if you're drugged up, try not to swear. <laughs> hey, so we're just locking them in. Uh, we we want to know what you're thinking right now. Uh, what I'm thinking right now is I need a new D, but <laughs> how about we do uh, all right, Ken Rockson three seated. Last guy to four peak was Eli Tomac. That is hard to do. So I'm going to take Kenny out of my top spot this week. Out of your top five? I'm going to go out of okay. my top spot. You're out of your mind. So I'm going to go Super Webb, Eli Tomac, Ken Roxon, And then depending on it, oh, man, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Malcolm Stewart fourth because he's been on a roll. Marvin Muscan for fifth. And I like Anderson wild card oh my gosh wow no yeah. barsha no barsha and no c and cirillo yeah we'll see i mean Bar- barsha he's been up there but i, I don't know what's qualifying I'm sure we'll just do the either me or marv just kind of seeing how things play out gotcha that, that's what I'm right now my top five i got it i like aquatic terra firma is telling you to swear please <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he, he he wants to see you. He wants the the drugs to come out. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if he if he knew how much pain I was in when I was trying to get off the couch to drive down there today, he he hear a lot of f bombs and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, getting real. Yeah, sure. Chase was very dedicated to making it so he could one. run the show with you guys. Yeah, first one he's ever missed. I, I gave him my all. I got in the car. My wife was driving me, and I made it about five five minutes down the road, and I had to turn around. I just. Couldn't handle it. Are you getting that knee massage like Wilson keeps posting his videos of his toe massages and uh, all that from his wife? Or is that off no, the table? I'm, get, I'm being off the table. I'm getting the leg straight in the air, don't move treatment. That's what I'm getting. <laughs> all right. Sounds well, good. Get well, better, dude. Yeah, get better. We'll hopefully see you on the next show. Um, and uh, good luck on your picks. It's weird to say that to you because right. you're the one that's usually saying that to everyone else. <laughs> That's right. Well, I'm feeling good. I got I got <laughs> rocks and web right last week. So I'm feeling good. Yep. All right. Well, uh, if you didn't see the the sign, I put you guys missed Chase already. Changed my mind, and so far no one's changed my mind. So uh, I must have been right there. So. Some people I think joined uh, late. Yeah. You see a couple messages. Where's Chase? Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to CSX Nation. I uh, I ripped my knee, my patellar tendon off my kneecap. So. I was Try to make it in, but I'll see you guys next week, guaranteed. All right. Just so you know, some people are blaming your picks on the medication before you go. (laughs) That's all right. All right. right. We'll talk to you soon. All right. See you guys. All right. Well, let's wrap this thing up. What do people have to win this week? Let's talk about the prizes. Let's take a look at the prizes. Um, Like always, get your picks in early. You always have the option to change them. So this week, 100 prizes. Top Score with the best time stamps going to get a showy VFX Evo helmet. My that's gosh. a $530 helmet. That's, that's a big deal. Awesome. Whoever wins that better reach out to us. I want to see that. Um, then second place, Fly Evolution gear set. Nice. Set of Bridgestone Battlecross tires. Then other prizes from Cycra, Pro Taper, 100%, Fox, Bell, CBDMD. Joining in late. Uh, Chase needs some of that. <laughs> yeah, we might have to run Chase some. Uh, ten and of course ninety ten dollar Rocky Mountain ATVMC gift cards. Like I said, if you won, reach out to us. We want to see what you won. So, yeah. And then for those of you guys that have started from the very beginning, yeah, I mean, you guys probably already know. We we talk about these every week, but grand prizes. We got a four fifty uh, KTM four fifty SXF race prep, a two fifty SX. So we're going two stroke. Then you got third place with Dunlop tires for a year, a Rocky Mountain spending spree prizes from Alpine Stars Tusk. Uh, Milestones video games with a TV and a console, fr- fly racing gear package, Stasic stability sa- cycles, and then even Motion Pro tools pack, which I would love to get, but I'm a, not eligible, I'm unfortunately. Everybody, every winner is always stoked when we reach out, but that Motion Pro winner is always like out of their mind. Yeah. I mean, I you, you got to love them. I mean, tools are great. Yep. I love having tools in the garage. Happy to get it. Um, so, given that our this show is a day early, um, we got a lot of talking to do between now and the races, so join our Discord. The link's going to be in the description. Uh, we're trying to get in on some good memes, some race talk. You know, we'll talk about our picks. You can post your screenshots of your picks. Also, just during the races, you can get in there, and, you know, we can kind of just bench race play-by-play, yeah. 
talk some smack. I like we have a collection of stats guys in there. If yeah. you need help with your picks, you got questions, there's a lot of stats guys in there to help you out. So yeah. I'm in with that. Yeah, it's a fun it's a fun chat room. It's basically just an advanced chat room. So uh or it just uh, has more features. So we like getting in there and hanging out with you guys and uh yeah, if you haven't already, make sure and subscribe to the YouTube channel too so you can catch uh, the notifications of when we go live with these shows. Again, hopefully Chase will be back for you guys and uh, we'll keep this party rolling. And like always, join our group, RM Fantasy S Experts. If you want to see our points in there, if you're trying to find mine, just scroll to the bottom. It's been a rough year, but what do you do? Yeah, also, if you guys have any suggestions for the show, like people you'd want to see on the show, anything you'd like to see from behind the scenes, especially since I'm kind of the behind the scenes guy, we'd love to hear what you guys have in mind. And uh, we want to make this, this stream really is for you guys. This is for bench racing and talking in the live chat. Yeah, we need, so, we, no, we need more reactions. Old Ben, we need to check up on Ben. Yeah. See how, if that Barsha move hurt him last week. So yeah. if you're having fun playing fantasy, make sure you let us know. Talk about your league, your bets, your strategies, all that. Reach out to us. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, good luck on your picks. I'm sure hopefully we can talk to you guys in the next couple days in that Discord chat. And, uh, yeah, good luck. We all need it. (laughs)